1970 Plymouth Sock and Martin Hemi Cuda. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, drag racing fans. Are you ready for an awesome video that starts off really powerful and really crazy and then kind of slows down in the middle as I take a look at individual plastic parts and then cooks up again right at the end for that victory at the finish line? Well, if so, don't forget to watch this amazing video. Today we're going to actually take a look at what's in the box underneath this 1970 Sucks and Martin kit by Ravel. <laughs> I'm starting to run out of gas. All right, so if I'm running out of gas, then you know what to do. Open up the lid and move on in the video. So let's go do that right now. Here we are once again down at the drag strip where we get to see the Sock and Martin 70 Plymouth Hemi Cuda taking the lead. This is a skill level three kit for ages 12 and up and 125th scale from the Motorsports Association in conjunction with Ravel. So this is another kit loaned to me by my good friend James. Let's just turn up the side of the box here and see what kind of coolness is in this kit. So it says it is 7 and 3 16 inches long. There's 148 parts molded in white with coarse chrome and water slide decals. After 46 national race wins and five national championships, the red, white and blue race cars of the Sock and Martin team have reached legend status. Their finest effort in the Pro Stock Classic class with their Hemi Cuda. It was said that nobody could match the speed of Ronnie Socks with a four speed shifter. Okay, so we get drag slicks and racing suspension, a 426 Hemi with twin carves and tube headers, interior roll bar and large hood scoop, molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and soft black tires. And then over here, it gives us, of course, all our paint colors that we need. Aluminum, dark blue, engine orange, which should be Hemi engine orange, flat black, gloss white, gold, gray, gun metal, semi-gloss black, transparent blue, and transparent red. The end of the box looks like the front of the box. And then here we get some nice photographs of the, that looks like the real Saka Martin car. And then in here we have the model kit. There's from the back th upper top three quarter, and of course the engine. And here it says that this kit came out in 2014. So six years ago, because now we're in 2020. So what we'll do is just slip the background out of the way. <laughs> and we'll oh, pin the box up on this great car. It's got some cool Keystone mags, my favorite type of mag wheels ever produced. So here, of course, James has never opened this, so we've got our body and undercarriage in the bag here. Then we've got all these engine components and other cool goodies in this bag. Our glass in a bag, which is good, prevents scratching. And we've got interior, looks like interior panels, stock ones even. And then here are the, oh, the tires. These are Hollow like real tires, real car tires. And then we've got our mag wheels with a ridge around them and stock wheels. So you could actually build this potentially as stock or or as a Sock and Martin car. And then here we have our instruction sheet and decals on the inside. These remind me of the old Johan style ones, eh? It's Johan used to do the Sock and Martin cars. So that's our box. I will just clear this out of the way and we'll come back and take a look at the instruction sheet. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here. It's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it. And Man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for a great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube. And I'll leave the link in the description below.
And here we are with our 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda from Sock and Martin. And of course you get some nice illustrations of the model as well as a picture. And here of course we have what it said on the box. The history with the 46 national race wins. And on and on. And now as we open this up of course we'll zoom our camera back so we can see what's going on. There's all our parts lists and everything. The symbols for what we need to watch out for. So, let's take a look at these panels individually. So for panel one, of course, we have this nice 426 Hemi, big block going together, the racing engine. So you got your left and right hand sides with a standard transmission, manual shift, uh, molded in place. And then here we have our Hemi uh, cylinder heads going on, as well as our valve covers. And then our water pump and fuel, or oil filler, filter, <laughs> pardon me, assembly going together. And then down here, we have our clutch going through our fan, going through that pulley. And our pulleys here, the lower radiator hose, the starter motor, our Chrysler alternator. Make sure you paint inside there with some red. Looks nice. There's the valley cover and our intake and our two big huge four barrel carburetors as well as our distributor going in and then in panel two here we have our engine getting the headers put on and then dropping into our floor pan here this is of course a unibody construction and then we also have a steering box and linkage going up there panel three shows our firewall with our windshield wiper motors going on here, as well as our brakes master cylinder and booster. Then we've got our seats going together. I always like these Chrysler type seats. It's just got a little hole in here. That's where your shifter is going to go in. Then the firewall and everything goes into the floor pan here. I'm not sure if these are separate or molded in. We'll take a look in the white plastic parts. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself, got to move the image down. Okay, you got a roll bar in here with the roll bar back. Uh, there's our gear shifter with the lockouts and stuff in it. Okay. Next up, we get our inner door panels, and these are nice that they're molded separate because, of course, they can mold in details like window wiper cranks and window winder cranks, pardon me, all kinds of goodies. Looks like our coil going into our inner fender aprons here. Panel 4 is showing our dashboard, and we have a clear cluster that goes in from the back here. And then we've got our steering console, as well as a steering wheel, and a tack on where the glue's on the top. There's our pedals off the back, so you have your parking brake, clutch, uh, brake pedal, and then gas pedal. And then here we've got our battery going in, as well as, I think that's a water reservoir. And then our radiator support here, and our firewall going in. Panel 5 shows our rear panel of our car being painted flat black. I do believe. I have to look at what F is. <laughs> then our windows, and our rear tail lamps here, which you'd have to paint red inside. We also have sun visors. A dome light, a rear view mirror, and our front windshield. Panel 6 illustration is our interior going into the body. Now this is interesting that the radiator and the fan shroud glue together and then go into the chassis here. Or, sorry, the unibody part of it. And then they would pop in and match up with the radiator shroud up here, the hole in the radiator shroud. That's an interesting way to do this. Panel 8 shows our rear suspension getting glued together with the Dana rear axle and of course our leaf springs. And then we've got our uh, drive shaft going in with our shock absorbers. Panel 9 shows the underneath going into the body. And then there's this little cover across the back here. Panel 10 is our front suspension here. With, of course, our torsion bars going out the back, and here's our linkages and sway bars. All this hooks into the front with the shock absorbers up underneath in through those A-arms. Once all that is in place, interestingly enough, here's our oil pan for our engine block being slotted on and glued in. So make sure you scrape the chrome off there, 
and the paint before you put all this together. And panel 11 shows those nice keystone five spoke mags going into the tires on the front and the drag slicks and the deeper dish wheels going in on the back. Panel 12 shows our wheels going together and you do get front disc brakes on this as well as a little retaining clip and a little thing to go in the wheel there. Same as on the back except you get drums on the back just like the real car. Panel 13 shows our headlights going into our front grille. There are some decals in here, some clear bits, and then these would be reflectors off the back. Panel 14 shows our upper radiator hose, our grille, our front bumper going in, as well as our windshield wipers. And in panel 15 we have all our hood pins going into our hood as well as the rear bumper going on in the back and then here we have I guess that's a decal I'm not too sure uh, okay and that's going on the side of the car as well as our hood going in and you do not glue the hood in place our final back panel shows a decal application where all these bits go as well as our stripes and the color for the roof and our side and that completes our look at the instructions and now we'll move on to those nice plastic components. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River Flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River Flood, and I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is repaint. Well, that car looks so much better now. Welcome back fans. Here we have our white plastic body for our 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda, the Socket Martin car. And remember in the instructions there, I didn't quite know what was going on in the side. Well, I figured it out. It's the door latches. They would be separate chrome pieces, which is quite nice. They pop in the side here. Anyway, there's our spot for our side mirror as well. So overall, this looks quite nice. You can see some side marker lights in the side of the body. If we turn it upside down, they actually do have the vinyl in the inside on our roof. A little spot for the dome light. There are a couple of mold marks underneath here that you'll have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade from Exacto or Excel. The trunk lines and all that look accurate. There is CUDA across the back here as well as the little latch spot to unlock the trunk. And the front looks quite accurate as well. It's got that rolled pan in there. So very nice work. Very nice indeed. Next up we have the unibody chassis subframe assembly and here you can see all the nice ridges and detail in there. There are some trademarks underneath here, which you might want to scrape out. I'm not too sure. It all depends on how you build these things. Excellent work underneath. Quite nice again. You can see this is made in Shenzhen <laughs> in uh, China, I believe. So yeah, excellent work. Now this did come hooked into the body so it's a nice tight fit in there and one other thing that was in this I'm not going to open these these are little metal pins for your front wheels so that's what it was showing in the instructions there so our first bag to open actually contained six little parts trees even though I got five there this is the extra one which we'll take a look at in a minute so as you can see this is quite nice you've got your engine here and it does look like this is designed to be built either stock or as a Sock and Martin. Because here you have these exhaust manifolds. 
And over here you have the racing exhaust manifolds. This is the racing package part of our motor. This, of course, has the stock components for 426 Hemi. Here's all our suspension components, as well as this, the front suspension, as well as this is all the extra little detail bits. So basically, um, we'll just move these to the side. <laughs> so here you've got your big Hemi engine going on. And it's quite nice. You have all the frost plugs in place as they should be. Your transmission with the proper cover on there. The little distributor. Whoops. And all kinds of cool stuff. You can see the nice detail on the intake manifold. This is for a regular four barrel carburetor setup. And then there's your water pump and oil filter. As well as the stock oil pan. And of course our uh, cylinder heads there. So moving this to the side, you can see the racing components now in here. The high-rise manifold, the noodle-style headers, the valley cover, the racing-style oil pan, and then some of those other features that were under the hood. Our rear axle, there's our front and rear brakes, the discs and the drums, sway bars, shock absorbers, and of course the Dana rear axle. All nicely done. There's our front sub uh, suspension there with the torsion bars. The K frame, I believe this is called, <laughs> or the K member. There's a bunch of the, the battery, the brakes, the back of the Dana cover. You can see the nice rivets on there. All kinds of goodies. The horns. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's our interior that was also in the bag. You can see the nice back seat. It's even got the upholstery pattern in, the correct one. And of course, our instrument panel. So again, all quite nice for what you get in bag number one. Of course, I don't think I can fit this in the camera too nicely. Anyway, there we go. Let's take a look at some of the other parts. Our next bag actually contains five white sprue parts trees. But I will show the first three and then move on to the second three. So in our first we have our upholstery and interior as well as our inner interior and um, fender aprons. And then here we have the body components. So let's just take a look quickly at our interior. So you can see the nice door panel engravings on there. The armrests and the window cranks. There's a gear shift lever. That one, I believe, is the stock one. You can paint that with a wooden shift handle. Then we've got our steering wheel, our pedals, center floor console, the sun visors, and the steering console. Looking at the back, looks pretty nice there too. A couple little mold marks you might want to get rid of. There's a couple little locator pins on the tops of those sun visors. But again, quite a lot of nice detail. Secondly, we move into our interior and fender aprons. And there's no mold marks on the carpeted area. There is a little hole there, but that's going to be covered with your seat. There's a couple little grills across the back here, just like it should be. Up underneath is nice and crisp. So again, quite a lot of nice detail work. There are a few mold marks here, which you can sand out and use your number 16 hobby knife down there. Just to clear it up and make it look nice. And then finally, for this little section, there's our extra roll pans and clips and rear bumper. Ooh, the rear bumper is molded in body color, so... I do believe this is all just for the Sock and Martin style. You can see the headlights go right through, so that's why they have the clear and then the reflector in the back. Little mirrors and hood hinges. A couple of mold marks in here, you, sink marks, you might want to fill those in. But overall... These components look quite nice, very much like the real Hemikuda. And our final two parts trees contain, of course, all our the rest of the pieces, I guess. So here's our special racing hood with our hood pins sunk in, some braces for the roll bar, our rear suspension springs there. There's a special racing shifter with a lockout, our extended shock absorbers, our mufflers and exhaust system, Steering console, drive shaft, firewall, radiator, 
radiator shroud and radiator support. So we're just bringing these up into the camera quickly. You can see the nice detail. There are sink marks there, which you'll have to fill. Yeah, lots of mold marks on here. Turning it over, you can see the nice detail on our firewall, as well as the grill and the radiator. All the parts are pretty crisp on this. And there's our hood with all the bits. Turning it over, there are some big sink marks in there. So overall, you know, this kit is quite nice, except for the problem with the mold marks. Chrome is your friend on this model kit. You get two complete chrome parts trees. And what's interesting about this is you get all the components for the stock Hemicuda, as well as the Sock and Martin or drag racing version. So here you can see you get your nice stock wheels, and then those are your headlight reflectors. Looks like the car, uh, the Chrysler um, alternator. <laughs> Some little fog lamps. All these little teeny components which you can't really see too well. Then there's our dual carburetors. Here's some rocker panel moldings. Front and rear bumper, the chromed versions. There's our exhaust pipes back here. And our turn signals, the cylinder heads, or the valve covers for our Hemi, pardon me, and our windshield wipers. And over here we have those beautiful Keystone mag wheels. I think these should be made mandatory on all cars. <laughs> and there's our big monstrous dual carburetors sitting here. What are those? 750 CFF, CFMI Hollies or something? Or CFI? Whatever. You drag racer guys know better. Write in the comments below if I got that right. Okay, anyway, there's our wheels. I mean, look at the nice detail on that. I like the ribs in here. It's pretty cool. The very thin bumpers, much like the Camaro and that sort of thing. Don't like to mention Chevy in a Chrysler video, but you know how it goes. On the back, a lot of mold marks again. So have to be cleaned up. You should paint the back of your bumpers black so they disappear underneath the car. And then looking at our great Keystone mags. Well, getting a little tired here. Getting those Keystone mags in there, as well as our carburetors. Makes for a pretty good chrome assortment on our Hemi Cuda. Next up we have our glass components with our rear window and our front window. There's the clear for our instrument panels. These nice little clear bits here are our uh, headlights and all the rest. And this is a windshield wiper bottle, which is quite a nice thing to have in here molded in clear instead of white plastic or whatever. Makes it look more authentic. See, nice work on that. As well, it was in a plastic bag, so no scratches. Here we have our decal sheet for the Sock and Martin Plymouth Hemi Cuda for 1970. And this is very reminiscent of the Johan Plymouth Sock and Martin Cuda decal sheet, as they made the 1971 version way, way back in the day. It uses the same kind of red and blue striping. Of course, well, that's a trademark, right? And uh, Firestone Drag 500 tires. These are decals which go on our rubber tires, of course. And then, of course, all the Plymouth nomenclature and uh, decals, uh, sorry, license plates and that sort of thing. There's our instruments and the instrument panel. So very nicely done. Lots of great color on here. There's a Keystone <laughs> little decal as well as Edelbrock, her shifters, SW, all kinds of cool things, hooker headers. So very nice decal sheet for sure. And here we have our tire options for this. I'm a little bit wrong, you can't build a completely stock version of this car from this kit because your tires don't match. There's our drag slicks there, and here are the front street kind of tires. Now, none of these have actual names on the tires, like Goodyear or Firestone or anything like that. That is for your decals, of course. And you have some nice tread pattern in here, and that basically is our tires. And that completes our look at the Ravel Motorsports Edition Sock and Martin 1970 Plymouth Hemi Cuda from Ravel. And if you've built this model in the past, please share your pictures with us on Facebook in the link below.
Well, I sure hope you enjoyed this great, amazing video and that you can find your own copy of this great kit because this one belongs to my good friend James who is loaning it to us. So thank you again, James, for allowing me to review some of these great old model kits of the past, present and possibly future, depending on if they reissue this. And it's not too old, so you should still be able to find it out there in internet land. And if you're looking for all of our latest models, don't forget to check them out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Leave that link in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Visit us on Patreon. And until next time, everyone, happy model building. Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... It, we are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.